Hey now, people, this is Calvin here with the Boneyard TV Show, and you're listening to Outdoor Adventures with Jason. Welcome to Outdoor Adventures with Jason. Each week, I bring the world of hunting, fishing, and conservation to you. From the great hunting and fishing opportunities found in the Americas to the dream safaris located on the dark continent beyond. I'll introduce you to those who are already out in the field living every outdoor enthusiast's dream, as well as outfitters and gear manufacturers that can make those dreams your reality. Welcome to this week's episode of Outdoor Adventures with Jason. I am really excited today. I've got a guy that I've been uh, talking with for, oh geez, about a year or so, and he brings just some amazing outdoor content, and his name is Jason Acorn. And for many of you in the States, you might not recognize that name, but if you head out to his website, theboneyardtv.com, you're going to just see some amazing hunting videos, photos, and the whole nine yards, and, and a neat product we're going to touch on that uh, he has. So Jason, how are you doing today? Really good, Jason. Thanks for having me. I'm pretty excited to be back here on your podcast and uh, having a chat with you. Yeah, that first episode was a complete total goof on my part, so I appreciate getting you back on because I think your message is so spot on for everything that stands for hunting nowadays with the anti-hunters on one side, hunters on the other side, and all those people in the middle that are confused by all the the noise. Uh, And so I love what your show does, promotes, and how it presents itself. For the folks that are in the United States that may not have seen your show, give me a little history on the Boneyard TV, if you would. Well, let me tell you, Jay, um, Kelvin and I, when we first started um, talking about maybe eventually having a TV show up here in Alberta, it was all about having fun and getting out there and doing what we we love to do, the passion of the outdoors and and yada, yada, right? Everybody that hunts loves to get out there and, and be able to brag about their adventures. And the cool thing about what Kelvin and I did with the Boneyard is we decided, okay, next year, let's get on TV. And and it actually took us a year and a half and we were up on wild TV and really sort of learning as we went. So it was pretty raw. It was pretty rough around the edges, but that's sort of how we wanted to make a stand in hunting TV and in the industry. You know, we decided that, you know, you could watch one show and you could watch 10 shows and they were all sort of the same format. They had the same sort of redundant music and all of that. And we wanted to just go right out of left field, sort of express who we are as people, as hunters, as family men. And it, the bottom line was we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we take our passion of hunting very seriously. So our show is, um, you know, it's got some heavy metal. It's It's got some wisecracks. We sort of beat up each other. If you screw up, if a cameraman misses a shot or something, then, you know, he gets bloodied a little bit <laughs> and bashed. But it's all in good fun. It's the camaraderie that we have amongst our group of guys that we're confident. And that's what it is we are confident in expressing our way of life and if it means having a a girl come out totally drop dead sexy and and shooting a bow and making fun of one of our pro staffers then we're going to do that because it's a little bit of clickbait it's a little bit of fun and it's entertainment and a lot of people forget that watching the hunting industry you know that you need to be entertained we want you sitting in front of the tv from the opening credits all the way to the ending credits and a lot of these shows you can turn it on you can decide okay they're hunting whitetail okay i'll come back in 22 minutes and see the kill shot and that's the formula of a lot of the uh hunting tv shows so we wanted to come in maybe give you two or three kill shots give you a tip of the week throw in some clickbait have a couple laughs some beautiful Canadian, Alberta, Saskatchewan, BC scenery. Show you how how we hunt, which is fair chase, which is do-it-yourself hunting, which is if it's not up in the the foothills of the Canadian Rockies, it's down in the badlands and the river bottoms and the coolies looking for muleys or hunting prairie elk or bighorn sheep up in the mountains. Like we do it all, and we're very happy to to show everybody the wonderful footage that we have. Because you're not on down here in the states, 
I actually stumbled across you a year or so ago uh, through Facebook, and I'll have the link for uh, your TV show and, and you on the show notes of this. I started catching some of the videos that you and Calvin were posting, and that's exactly what you said. And I didn't find out till later that there was some of the beautiful women in there. That's just icing on the cake. What was really <laughs> cool was it was hunting. It wasn't scripted. It wasn't the formulatic or formula show that said, here, I'm going to go out there. And like you said, 22 minutes later, here's my kill. And there's just a bunch of, I don't know, fluff in the middle. Yeah. It was straight, well, hardcore hunting. You know what, Jason? Um, to, to put on a, a truly entertaining hunting show, you got to realize that this isn't reality TV. What it is, is it's documentary. So it is okay to go back after your hunt and fill in all the, the B-roll, the, the walking, some more scenic shots. But the hunting itself needs to be captured in the raw form. You cannot do those crazy shots where, you know, you're coming over a hill and you crest over and the camera's on the other side catching your face as you come over because it's so unrealistic. One of the, the shots that I just cannot stand is when a hunter's in the blind, they show the hunter, then they show the deer, and then they show the hunter again with the camera outside the blind shooting in. And you're like, okay, well, I thought there was a deer out there, but obviously the cameraman is standing in between the, the hunter and the deer. And it just really, it takes you away from the moment and it's got to be real. And that's where we decided, you know, well, if I really screw up and I miss that shot, well, I'm not going to, I'm not lying. That happens and I miss that deer and I'm going to show it. And then my partner is going to jump in and rip me a new one and <laughs> I'm going to comment and then we'll move on and then maybe get them in the next segment. Yeah, that type of setup and the one that absolutely just kills it. And it was the big thing through the 80s and, and all is when they show the hunter or the guide and the hunter walking up to the animal and the camera shots on the other side of the animal, like this is the first time they've seen yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Especially yeah. in a winter scene when you look and you can see the snow is beat down all around the animal. Yeah. Those are some things that you can't hide. If you're a very aware viewer, you're going to pick up on that. And if you're a hunter, and that's why the big consensus is, is that, you know, the big time mountain hunters and hunters, they just can't stand watching hunting shows because it's little things like that that really turn you off. Now, what I would do is if I killed the animal, what you do is typically if I'm in a tree stand, I have my main camera that's on the animal. Then I have a, a smaller type of a, a GoPro or an ion camera that's shooting back at me. It's on my bow or rifle. And so it's showing me Then it, I can show the animal. But then even better is if you have a third camera that can capture both you and the animal in the same frame. So then you have that relationship of, oh, okay, well, geez, he is really close to that deer. You can really see the interaction between the prey and the predator. And then when you shoot it, you catch it running off, you turn it back to the hunter. You want to capture the, the real effects of him shaking the, the buck fever, the whatever, the, his enjoyment. But then once you go in, you, I don't ever go scout and find the deer before the camera finds. I grab the camera and then it, it's with me as I'm tracking. And then it is a real moment. And then the expressions are real. Everything is real. And that is very important. You can always go back and redo some shots and try to reenact those feelings. And that's fine. But you got to be good at it. Right. And and that is the thing. You cannot fake certain things. It just does not work. It comes out flat. It comes out contrived and, and fake. And, and that really hurts you in the long run. And that's one of the things I thought was really neat about the content that you're putting out is that it's hunting. It's what you get when you four or five buddies go out, two buddies go out. And as you said, one of them makes a screw up or one of them makes a great shot. Either way, they're getting feedback from their hunting partner, good or bad. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You know, that's what friends are for, right? <laughs> and then you as the person that got the feedback, you or Calvin, whoever, is waiting because if that person messes up, you're waiting to pounce. You, oh, you know? absolutely. And so, and that's kind of, I, I think guys can relate, women can relate, you know, that's just kind mm -hmm. of the, a, a feeling that everybody can relate to. And so it's it's amazing some of the, the shows that you put out, the episodes I've watched. And there's a short video, and this thing's been floating around for a while now on Facebook, and I see people keep sharing it on occasion is, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's you or Kelvin but or one of your pro staff, but somebody drills a moose. And yes, that's Mitchell that, payment. Tell me, what did he shoot it with? 
Well, he was uh, actually, um, he shot that moose in the Edmonton bow zone. So it's just a bow zone. There's no rifle hunting. And a lot of these fields and sections of land are actually within the, the city limits. So it's the Edmonton bow zone. And Mitchell is actually hunting a white-tailed deer that he calls Lucky. And he is about 190 inches. The night before, he's sitting in his, his stand and this bull moose comes out into the alfalfa field. So the fast forward to the the next day, he's sitting up in his stand and what comes out right below him is this bull moose. Wide open for elk, white tail, mule deer, moose, anything um, that walks into your stand. If you have a tag, you can pretty much take it with a bow. So this moose comes out and Mitchell, um, he's shooting our uh, very own killing sticks, our own company, and totally put just a great shot on this moose. And it is just the most unreal kill shot and a quick kill. The moose dies like within 20 seconds blood flying like it's just a gore fest but it is just so amazing to watch if you are a hunter you get it you know everything was done so good and this clip has been geez on youtube alone on the first run it was over 330,000 views and like you said, it's just been shared over and over and over. I've caught people passing it off as their own kill. <laughs> it's just been wonderful. And it's been it's been banned a few times, but then we get it back on and it's shared again. And it's still it's still making a run. And I think you're going to see that uh, clip for years to come. And I think if you're probably an anti-hunter or not a hunter, but not against it, you look at this clip and you'll go, God, that's brutal. But if mm-hmm. you're a hunter, you look at it and go, man, that arrow did exactly exactly what it needed to do. And that moose was dead on his feet. He just didn't know it yet. Absolutely, man. He was so full of blood. Yeah, it's incredible. And that kind of leads me to where I'm going because as we've talked over the last year, and even a year ago, when we first did our first interview that didn't go right, you were just setting up to head to the ATA show with your new arrows. That's right, Jason. Thanks for reminding me. And it's I've been, got a lot. I've got a lot of info to yeah to catch you up on. Yeah, I'm not a vertical bow hunt. So for the listeners that are, you were headed down to the ATA show, and the arrows were not new, but they were newer. You were you were bringing them along, and now fast forward what six eight months eight months or so, and and I've heard nothing but good things and seen nothing but good things about these arrows, and they're called the killing sticks. And and tell the listeners all about this concept, this process, and, and what you got, because I think vertical bow hunters are going to love this. Oh, man, Jay, it has been such a wonderful five or six months. When we went down to Indianapolis for the ATA show, it was pretty much the the debut of our arrow company south of the border. And after a bunch of legwork, phoning companies, phoning distributors before we went down, within the first five minutes, Nate Hendricks from Kinsey's came by. And he was the very first guy that walked up to us. And we ended up, um, we are now in Kinsey's catalog, which will be distributed throughout the United States. Uh, I think it's more of a central, south central or Midwest. It turned out so good. And to explain a little bit ab- about our arrow line, we have, um, the, it is called the Killing Sticks, which really just, it's just the perfect name for who we are as a company and as as hunters. And it just, it screams volumes on, on how we perceive hunting. You know, uh, they're arrows, but they are killing sticks. They kill. And it's not a joke. And they were made to um, kill whatever you aim at. Um, in our lineup, we have uh, multiple arrows. We've, we've got five different lines um, right now uh, that starts off at the, the Hawkeyes. They are a .006 straightness, our entry-level arrow, extremely great arrow. And I need to point out that the straightness rating on our arrows is the full 32 inches of the arrow. So if you're shooting a .006, you cut off four or five inches, you are probably now shooting a .003 because those arrows are that good. Premium carbon technology, the latest technology, the finest carbon. When we were down, I just want to get away from the arrow lineup, when we were at the ATA show, we uh, had multiple meetings with Victory Arrows. Uh, They just loved everything about what we were doing, the name, the logo, the the quality of the carbon uh, weaves, and they really want to team up with us. So it was a really good uh, shot in the arm for 
for us and a pat on the back because we knew what we had was a great product and to have victory come around and just not leave us alone and, and almost harass us to, to uh, partner up with them really, really spoke volumes for us. So getting back to the arrows, um, you can move back up to, um, the Hawkeye is a 0.245 ID. So pretty much a, a regular size arrow. You can go up to the original. Again, it's uh, 0.245 uh, ID, uh, 0.003 straightness. Great overall hunting arrow, just target arrow. It's a real good base arrow. It is it is our original. But then when you get up to our, our ventilator, now you're getting a smaller diameter, 0.204. It's a lighter arrow. It's smaller arrow. It is a deadly arrow. Good for, for target shooting. I have pro shooters that have actually dropped the fat shafts and are shooting my ventilators because of how quickly they tune and they keep the tune and they just shoot them just flawlessly. So it's been a great arrow. I have used that arrow for many seasons in, in the field, and I mean, they are just so fantastic. If you want to get extreme, we have a micro ventilator, which is a 0.165. It's tiny. It is our most heaviest arrow. It is a beast. I have taken a, a mule deer at 93 yards, passed through, just destroyed the deer, and it was by far the best shot of my life. But those arrows, they allow you to do shots like that over and over and over. They are just so good. 0 0.001 straightness, and again, 32 inches. So it's like, a, it's flawless. Once no. you cut it, it is absolutely flawless. It's hard to find the spine on it. It is so good. Okay, so and then our last arrow. Let oh, me just take sorry, a step back. Repeat that again. Did you just say you took a mule deer at 93 yards with a I bow? I did. Season five coming up this year. And I did it solo on camera. Just the greatest stock in the middle of an alfalfa field. No, nothing behind me. It was, it was one of those hunts where I just had to sort of sit down and reflect on my hunting life and where I've, the things I've done to that moment. I decided like this is this is where I've wanted to be as a hunter to be able to do something like this and sneak up on three big bucks and take a beautiful deer at 93 yards in the open and it was one of those I can't wait for the episode to come out I am just jonesing for this episode well and the reason I mentioned that is there's when I, and I say guy I mean hunters men or women they can't take a mule deer at 93 yards with a rifle <laughs> And so to, to take one out with a, a bow, I've seen some of this long distance shooting is becoming more and more popular. And I don't agree or disagree with it because if the hunter is capable and, and the job is done, power to them. So uh, absolutely, Jay. You know, like there's, there are pro shooters that do the circuit. They do the paper, they do the 3D targets, and they X every target. And they're unbelievable shots. They can guess the range the yardages without a range finder but then you get them out in the field and it's a little different when it's a, a, a live animal and you get shaky and you, you oh, hold yeah. your breath and then you know what it, it's a different thing what i do in any pro shooter that that uh, is like me you, you shoot 70 you shoot 80 you shoot 90 and that's what you shoot you don't shoot 20 or 30 like why would you because you know that when you're shooting 70 80 90 yards you're gonna be like dead nuts at 60 and I'm not saying I would like to, to have to shoot that far every time because even though I have taken quite a few animals at over 60 and 70 yards, I like the up close and personal. So the closer, the better, always. It's always best. And I felt at that moment when I when I when when the sun came up and I got into position, I felt confident. I was steady. I was like a rock. I was focused. Sweet. And I put, the, I put the smack down on him. It was perfect. And as a hunter, and that's, I think it's awesome, one one way or another, if the person chooses to do it or not do it, I, I don't care as long as they're confident and quali you know, competent. To, Qualified, to make this yeah, um, Ab absolutely. So You're power right. to you. I think that's awesome. But when you said 93 yards, I was just like, excuse me? <laughs> uh, oh, and I, I'm talking like the biggest mule kick. Like he, he, his toe was touching the ground when his back cheek kicked up. Like it was just the greatest footage. And that was with <laughs> like, a micro Just wait, it was. Absolutely. So the micro ventilator that I shot, um, I had an 89 grain outsert on the tip, which gives you that extra front loading heavy tip, which just gives you that kinetic force when you when you hit the animal and it just blew right through it. 
So if you measured the whole arrow with that 89 grain outsert, and I'm at about 10.2 grains per inch on, on the arrow, and then a 100 grain tip, I was well over 500 grains. So it was... It was a pretty heavy loaded arrow and that's why they're so good at the long range because the small diameter with the heat, the boning heat veins, which are a little lower profile, a little longer, but lower profile, it cuts right through the air. Uh, the wind doesn't deflect it as much. And then when it hits, it's got that weight. It just keeps going. Wow. It's hard to stop it. So it was, uh, I never did find the arrow. I looked and looked and looked and looked, but <laughs> found that deer not very far away. So if you, if the person goes out to Killin' Sticks, and that's spelled K-I-L-L-N-S-T-I-X.com, KillinSticks.com, you, you got betcha. five arrows so if you cover the gamut if that person's shooting a regular bow they want just a traditional arrow they can get it if they want the tournament arrow they can get it all of that stuff that's is right available. absolutely our, our tournament arrow is our uh 23 series fat shaft arrow for indoor um and multiple outdoor paper shooting we have a number of pro shooters across canada that are on top of the the podium every tournament shooting our tournament series arrows they're a 0.001 arrow again 30 two full inches it is absolutely the most flawless arrow um, you're gonna find and it's super light i think a, a 400 uh, spine tournament is roughly about 6.1 grains so you don't want to get much much lower than that but um just a great arrow we, Kelvin and I are just so tickled and just so excited because I can talk all day about these arrows because they're that good well, there's nothing about them that makes us cringe or worried um, it's just so flawless. We're um, actually in the works right now to um, get a, a local component maker here in Alberta. Um, we're slowly bringing, um, we're sourcing what we can locally. And if we can't get it here, we, we look down south in the States and uh, just get like our boxes and stuff like that. They originated in China. Now we're getting them here in Canada, which is just so great for us because that's just one thing we want to do. Oh yeah, but keep it local. We have you know, and then distribute yeah. worldwide if if at all possible. Yeah, absolutely. But we, um, you know, we uh, sell online. Our arrow line is actually starting to make a, a breakthrough in Utah. I met a, a guy up here at a trade show in Edmonton who is now a good friend of mine. His name is Robbie Badger. His family owns Jumping Jack Trailers in Salt Lake City, Utah. Robbie, he's right across the aisle from our booth, and we have this 40-inch TV just showing highlight clips of that moose kill, of my <laughs> mule deer kill, just over and over on loop, and his eyes are just getting bigger and bigger. So Robbie ended up buying some micro ventilators. He goes back to Utah. He hands them over uh, to his uh, Bowtech. And I, I kept following him. Have you shot them yet, Rob? Have you shot them? Because no, no, but my, my Bowtech phoned me today and he says, where did you get those arrows, man? He goes, they're from Canada. And he goes, wow, they're legit. They <laughs> are legit. So now uh, they're starting to spread a little bit down in Utah. And that's the greatest thing. You know, you get a good hunter who's really personable and has a lot of friends and if he likes them, you know, his buddies are going to buy them. Yeah, that won't take long for that to spread in the States. Uh, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a, again, well, I'm not a vertical bow hunter. Uh, I've, I've read nothing but positive reviews about these things online. And with you and Kelvin and the rest of your team backing it up, you know, mm -hmm. if one of the listeners wants to talk arrows and figure out what the right arrow is, they, there's a contact button on the Killing Sticks website. And yep. one of you guys, I'm sure, will step right up and, and school them on what's going to work, you know, or what they should try absolutely you know what uh jason i'd like to mention one thing is that we have right now uh, a pro hunter uh a hunter pro staff program going on right now sure so if anybody out there in radio land would like to try out our arrows we um all we suggest you do is email your hunting resume to info at killingsticks.com and then we will make a file for you and give you a heck of a good deal on your first dozen arrows and then the more you promote us we will keep track and then maybe next year you'll get half off or, or free arrows See. and uh it just grows it just depends on the person and promoting sending pictures and uh spreading the word that's a heck of a deal and, and i'm sure there's folks that will be listening to this and contacting you and i'll have that in the show notes so that uh if you're driving or whichever you just refer to the show notes and you'll be able to easily touch base with with jason and kelvin and and start talking to them about uh what's available to you on 
the pro staff line because the more you promote these guys, the better it is for you. Everybody knows arrows can be expensive. And so if you're helping them grow, they're going to help you. Absolutely. Well, with that, right mind, on. where this all started was the Boneyard TV. And yeah. you've been on Wild TV now for two or three seasons. And for those in the States, Wild TV is the Canadian equivalent of like the Sportsman's Channel or the Outdoor Channel. Uh, but it broadcasts just north of our border and shows Canadian hunting shows. Yep. You, you got that right. We were uh, actually on Wild TV for four years oh, four. and uh, walked away from Wild TV with over 30,000 followers, which really, um, I think we were the fastest growing outdoor uh, hunting channel in Canada ever. We've really just really did everything we could with Wild TV. So we're, we're taking our next step. And now um, what we're doing is we're, um, it's like the hunting industry um, on the TV side has evolved and it's slowly making its way just online, which is very beneficial for guys like us, because now what we do is we save that money. There's a misconception that on, on the outdoor channel and the pursuit that everybody gets paid to have their, their show on there. Well, that may be true on some of the big branded heavy hitters. They may get paid, but um, 90% of the shows do not. They pay. And as the years go by, the, the amount of dollars go up. So now um, Calvin and I are just so happy that we, we will be saving all of that money and using it to promote our new channel, which should be up next month. And it is called Twisted Outdoors TV. And it is an online free subscription channel for everybody out there. We want to bring them along with us and give them an even greater entertainment uh, bang for the buck. All our episodes will be condensed, re-edited uh, from season one all the way up to our new season five, which will start um, uploading next month, one a week. And I do believe it'll be like a Netflix layout where you can go on, choose any episode. Um, I think um, when we get season six up, we will have close to 70 episodes up. Wow. So there's a lot of content there, a lot of old stuff that makes me cringe, but will probably make you laugh. And some awesome hunts, right from season one all the way to our new season. It's uh, it's really great for me to go back and look at season one and go, ooh, boy, I look good, but I sound like shit. And, you know, it's just, I'm a rookie. I didn't know what I was doing. But uh, to, to see how we've evolved and just... Man, we work so hard at trying to put out a real, real good product for the viewers. And that's that's what this is all about. You know, we want to have fun and we want you to have fun. Well, and the listeners on the show can also head over to your website, theboneyardtv.com. And there's a yeah. subscription section on there. And that's where I belong to. You go in there and it's behind a, a firewall, so to speak. And, oh gosh, there's got to be 50, 60 videos on there at least. Uh, yep, there's a ton of clips. Um, lots of good content, lots, uh, and there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I mean, that's the thing too, with, with, um, Twisted Outdoors, we can put stuff on there that we weren't allowed to put on there with Wild TV. So you never, there, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but there's some stuff in there that'll, your eyeballs will pop right out of your head. Well, there's an episode on the, and I'm not going to give the whole rundown of it, but there's a car, a woman, and an explosion. Put them in whatever yeah. order you want to put them in, in your mind, but head on over and subscribe to the Boneyard TV so you can watch it. Cause it's, it's pretty funny. Some of the stuff you guys do just cracks me up. And that's what I love about watching you guys is just that we're doing the job. We're hunting correctly. We're, we're showing hunting as it is for many people that do it in that lifestyle, but we're mm -hmm. not, as you said, putting out a documentary. Yeah, man. Like you, you do not want to get up and grab a beer. You want to sit down because you do not know what you're going to miss. And that's the great thing about the boneyard is that it's click, 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 click. Your eyes are always balancing back and forth. We do our homework. Yeah, it, this is like a business for us. So we, we try hard in, in every way possible to keep you fixed on the TV screen. We don't want you to leave. We want you to watch every single second because it's all good. That's the thing, you know, if we're not, if we're not hunting at the, at the moment and we're doing a, a talk or a tip, it all still has to be entertaining. And it starts with the host and it starts with the footage and, and the camera work. It, it all has to work together. 
and we understand that and we realize the things that we need to do to keep you entertained. We've got the Killing Sticks Arrows, which is is your main product there and, and has done fantastic. And you'll be at the ATA show again for 2017? You know what? It's still up in the air. Um, it was a great show. We'd love to do it, but we might switch it up. We might do uh, the Kinsey's Trade Show or it's just sort of up in the air right now. I do know that we will be we're really looking forward to heading out to Eastern Canada, maybe uh, Ontario or Quebec, and do a couple trade shows there, maybe an archery tournament or two, and bring our whole lineup of arrows and catalogs and all that great, great stuff. Um, when it comes down to the States, that is where the market is. That is it. That is Shangri-La for us. <laughs> so, of course, we want to be down there this uh, or next year. Uh, we just have not decided where we're going to be yet. You and Kelvin are the uh, the main guys on this show. There's no you're, you're strictly the TV show and the arrows. You don't book any hunts or or anything of that nature with people, do you? No, no, we don't. But I do hunt or host every once in a blue moon when I feel like there's somebody that I would love to hunt with or that I would love that would be great on the boneyard. I give them a call and and uh, I bring them up. So um, for a non-resident alien, so somebody from the states, I can only hunt or host every two years. Um, but for anybody across Canada wide, I can hunter host every year so okay. i don't really we're not outfitters no we're not um well, we are just hunters folks so that's the thing is get out there support head over the boneyard tv check it out they've got good sponsors they're listed check those out because they're putting out a good product uh you can go to killing sticks for the arrows and then the tv is going to be twisted Twisted Outdoors. And, yeah, and uh, we will be keeping everybody updated on either the Killing Sticks page or the Boneyards page or my personal page, Jason Acorn. As soon as we have any more new info, we will let the masses know so they, they can keep track and jump over as soon as it's up. Sweet. So they'll be able to binge watch on the tablet, on the desktop, wherever they got an internet connection, they can watch the Absolutely. TV. That, see, that's awesome. And Roku. Oh, yeah. And you're going to distribute on Roku as well. Yes. Yeah. Oh, see... Now, and, that makes it great and, and totally opens up your market. It really does. And and what we're working on now, too, is uh, it, it's a tough nut. But I'm, I'm seeing uh, the meat eater, Steve Ranilla, and uh, someone else. But they're on uh, Netflix now. So I'm, I'm checking out Crave, uh, Hulu, Netflix. It's not easy, but it's it's like anything. you got to put your head down, ass up, and get at it and keep yep. going until you get her done. And I would encourage anybody that's listening, if you have a Netflix account, you can go into the search or options or settings. I, I can't remember exactly what it is, on, but it, just do a little hunt and peck, and it's not that big of a site to find it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell them that you you know like those hunting shows, watch those hunting shows, uh, go yeah. and request more hunting shows content. Put in there you want the Boneyard TV. TV. Let the folks at Netflix know this is what you want to see. You're paying, and while That's they've right. got a lot of great stuff, they're starting to pick up some hunting and fishing stuff. Let's get some more on there because, you know, face it, it's dollars. They can get a lot of content from somebody like you guys a lot cheaper than they can by going out and making their own show. So, Absolutely. And and that is the great thing about these uh, specific channels is that they do pay for content, unlike uh, The Pursuit and wild tv and and those types so it's very lucrative and it could be a very very good uh uh thing for a guy like myself sure well and that's <laughs> who works her butt off for nothing exactly and that's the deal is you, without having to pay that wild tv you're going to increase your distributorship from yeah not, not that there's anything wrong with being broadcast in canada that's your home country and that's great but mm -hmm. you know that the market has to be south of the border for you as well and absolutely so now you got the states where you go up to somebody and say, what's the Boneyard TV? I don't, I don't know. A year from now, oh man, look at this. This is great. I've seen these guys on YouTube. I've seen them on, on Facebook. And it only helps to to continue to promote and and compensate. And when I say compensate, it's money and respect mm -hmm. for the work that you and Kelvin are doing. Totally true. The one thing that really sort of finalized our thoughts of, of where we need to be with our show and our production company was when we were down at Indianapolis at the ATA show, and we had multiple people from Tennessee, from Kentucky, come up to us and say, hey, we saw that moose clip. We shared it. It was unbelievable. And like, Calvin and I were just blown away. It's like, well, that's social media for you. That's 
that's online. The reach is just, it's endless and it'll go as far as you want it to go as long as you're working hard at it. But when you're on one channel um, on a station, you need those subscribers to watch. And if you don't have the subscribers, then, you know, it's sort of, uh, you're wasting your time. Yeah. It's the, the best move for us. We are taking a step forward and uh, we're climbing that ladder. You know, we've got some, some goals we still haven't reached and we're getting close. So tell me any big hunts coming up for you. I know hunting season's kind of just ending you know or has ended but what's in the pipelines for what are you planning to do next well jason i'll tell you the grass is finally coming out the dandelions are starting to pop out so the big black bear are running around um so the bears are starting to be hunted i don't do baiting but what i do do is spot and stalk and it is so much fun so uh, Calvin and I will be leaving here in about a week and a half for uh, a northern black bear spot and stock hunt, um, which is just so exciting. But later on this fall, the big hunt that I am doing is a BC goat hunt. And I'm telling you, Sweet. I cannot wait. The zone I am hunting goat in has been closed for 13 years. They just opened it up this year. Um, my cousin, Brett Acorn, lives in BC. He's got a couple real big outfitters and uh, uh, sheep hunters that are going to be tagging along. So I've got such a good crew. I'm so excited. So that's going to be on, on the top of the list. But other than that, it is big Alberta, Cooley, Badland, Mule Deer. Uh, we've got oat eaten alfalfa, slam, and whitetail. Uh, I've got a couple that eluded me last year, but I'm a little smarter this year. And uh, I'm hoping to get, get a really nice whitetail down. But uh, one of the hunts that I'm really excited for is the Sutfield elk herd. They have been hammered so hard you know, on the uh, the Sutfield field air force base that they've driven them off the base and now all the farmers um are having lots of problems but these big elk are up up to like 400 inches and they are bone white antlers because there's no trees they live in little draws little swamp lowlands in fields and it is such a unique hunt and i've been down there scouting getting land uh lots of permission looking for sheds so that is one hunt that i am extremely stoked for this year and isn't alberta it seems to me if you head up quite a ways north in alberta so we can get those big wood bison yeah yeah wood buffalo uh there's a herd up there and this is a, a really unique um, hunting territory because anybody from the states can just come up and hunt this herd. You don't need a tag. You don't need a hunter host. You don't need anything. This herd, there's two huge herds up in northern Alberta. There's the Zama Lake herd, and then you got the, the wood buffalo herd. Well, the wood buffalo herd has uh, tuberculosis. And I'm not saying every buffalo has it, but it is in the herd. So what they want to do is trim down the wood buffalo herd to keep them from uh, moving west and getting into contact with the Zama herd and infecting them. Okay. So there are some huge, huge bulls, big bison up there. It is really uh, a tough, tough hunt. Swampy, just, oh man, it is, uh, it's hell on earth up there, but you, you could walk out of there with 1500 pounds of buffalo. See, that's amazing. And you're going to be getting a call from me one of these days. I was at the Dallas Safari Club show and I spoke uh-huh. with an outfitter. And I, I have their name yep. put away, so I can't give it to you because I just don't have it off the top of my head. But I yep. spoke with an outfitter that was about three hours north of Edmonton. Right. West and north. For those of us coming up from south of the border, we can take two bears up there in the fall. I think take two in the spring, mm-hmm. too. But yep. uh, it's a two-bear hunt. Now, it is baited, but I've got the mobility challenges, so I kind of have to compensate <laughs> a little bit for that. And, oh, uh, it's it's so good for you, man. It, and oh, yeah. You're going to get a call. I'm going to be flying into Red Deer and hijacking you and and Calvin if possible, and we're gonna go up there and hunt some black bear because they were showing me pictures of the bears. And I grew up over by Ontario, hunted Ontario, fished mm-hmm. Ontario. Yep. You take a two hundred pound bear, that's good. A three hundred pound bear is a monster. In Alberta, a three hundred pound bear is a two year old bear that you pass. <laughs> There's some giant bear here. Well, they gotta they gotta compete with the grizzly bears, right? So they gotta be bigger. They get killed. They're showing me these, I think, eight foot, seven foot caped out bears, and I'm going, holy smokes. Uh, yep. And 
you know, and it's my idea of roughing it, a lodge, cooked food, TV, DVDs. Life is good. Life, you know, and a beer. I can get a yeah. good Labatt's or a good Molson that's not watered down when they cross the border with them. So, you know. Nothing but high test up here, Jay. You know that. You're Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's a, a call you're going to get as soon as I figure out a time that I can get up there to do that. Uh, because these people were showing me and I'm just going... Those aren't bears. Those are, you know, those are baby moose, small bison that they're shooting. Um, Yeah, they're big. They are big. The color phase was fairly, not common, but not bad, not hard to get either. Um, Mm -hmm. So just Alberta to me, if I ever had to leave the States as far as hunting, you get up to Alberta and you've got elk and mule deer and and the bison and oh, i mean it just the list goes on and it's it's an the land of the giants paradise. it it is you know it's like north america's africa is in alberta you got the the mountains with the the goats and the bighorn and man you, you can geez you can hunt almost anything here other than caribou and uh grizzly and uh you know we just down south there, I had never seen so many speed goats in my life. They are really bouncing back. We've had so many good winters now. I think we've had four good winters in a row. And uh, it, the, the animals are really bouncing back. And is healthy numbers, big, big deer, big elk, big moose, you name it. It's just, I am so fortunate to be able to live here and have grown up a, a hunter here in Alberta. Yeah, great area. Well, I'll tell you what. It is. I want to be respectful of your time, Jason. And uh, All right. I appreciate everything you've done and what you've shared with the listeners. And for the listeners, these are the guys you want to support. Get out there, help them. And even if it's not subscribing to their channel, you know, on the paid side, go to like their Facebook page, promote their arrows, check them out, email them with questions. Just in a little bit that Jason talked about arrows, do you think he's not going to help you out and answer any of your technical questions? You're going to get more information than you probably even know how to process. (laughs) We can go on and on and on. (laughs) Exactly. If you're a diehard hunter and you have a good resume, let him know. Let him see what you're doing. Him and Kelvin will look at that and possibly be able to put you up on a a pro staff position to help not only promote you, but to promote them. Get involved. Contact these guys. They're easy to find on Facebook. I'm going to have links to everything in the show notes. And I, I can't say enough about the absolute genuineness of, of, of you, Jason, and just the ability to, I'll send you a crazy text and you'll answer it back without even batting an eyelash, you know, and there's a bunch of- Yeah, for sure, you man. Know, so- it's great. I love watching the shed hunting you've been doing. Just keep up Thank that you, great sir. stuff you're doing to promote the hunting that we all love and, and want to do. Jason, I live it. I love it. And I am here to help anybody uh, get into the industry, uh, answer any questions, tips. You know, I'm just here to to keep our heritage and our way of life alive. Sweet. Well, again, I can't thank you enough for your time. Everybody, I'm going to have you. You know, take off to to check these guys out, and I look forward to seeing what you guys are up to, and and we'll talk again soon. You have a great afternoon. You too, Jason. Thanks a lot for phoning, and I had a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Peace and peace and love, brother. Yeah, peace and love. Peace and love. No more signed autographs. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Come early spring, it's getting green Fisher on the bed And hear those turkeys gobble It's ringing in my head The winter rise bass boat Here comes another year Yeah, we command the outdoors around here Oh, we Man, the outdoors. Yeah, we command the outdoors. Come summertime, we're feeling fine, fishing on the lake, flipping jigs in Carolina rigs from early morning till real late. Bonfires on the creek bank, kick back a couple beers. Yeah, we command the outdoors around here. 
Yeah, we command the outdoors. Yeah, we command the outdoors. Next year's does until you know winter's on the way. Brushing blinds and deer stands. The fever starts to creep. Fill our freezers full of ducks, lots of tender deer. Yeah, we command the outdoors around here. Yeah, we. Yeah, we command the outdoors. So grab your guns, shells, boys. Put on your camouflage. Cause we command the outdoors.